Opening round play continues as the Missouri Tigers out of the SEC take on the UCLA Bruins from the Pac-12. Welcome to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. This is the Los Angeles Regional Day 2 winner's bracket game. This is this matchup here a lot of people have their eyes on, but following that, Weber State and Cal State Fullerton to follow in an elimination game. Yesterday, day one, the Tigers getting it done in one way. The Bruins, another great hitting from Mizzou, great pitching from UCLA, and each team trying to go to 2-0. Trey Bender alongside Leah Amico, the three-time All-American. Glad you're with us. These teams both getting timely hitting to get the first victory in day one. Well, yes, both teams came out swinging. It took UCLA a little bit longer. Mizzou, for them, it was a long ball. Six of their seven runs coming off of home runs, including a grand slam. And for UCLA, it was a lot of singles, a lot of back-to-back -back hits, and they broke it open in the sixth. How about Hattie Moore and the way she's swinging the bat right now from Missouri? Well, she is so hot right now. Hattie Moore, their catcher, only a sophomore, but she is getting hot at the right season. This was her eighth home run of the season. And then she follows it up with her ninth, a long shot off of the scoreboard on a low pitch. And she was all smiles, putting her team ahead with a good lead. The hitting of Missouri's been big. The pitching of UCLA has been sensational all year. Rachel Garcia did not get, but get the complete game, but she was dominant. Well, she really was. I mean, Rachel was dealing last night. She had 13 strikeouts, six innings of perfect pitching. She ended up just blowing it by these hitters, the rise ball. She had her curve moving and even her off-speed pitch. She can do it all. Bruins and Tigers, SEC and the Pac-12 squaring off. The winner will go to 2-0 next from Westwood. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One as Mizzou and UCLA square off here in postseason play. This NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. A perfect day for softball. First of three today. A couple elimination games to follow. Here's Miss Val. Valerie Condos Field, legendary former gymnastics head coach at UCLA. Seven NCAA titles, 16 conference titles. Talking with Coach Enoy Perez and yeah, two great coaches uh, at the highest level. Well, I'm sure they're just talking about how to finish it all and, and, and leave it on the field. Speaking of finishing and leaving it on the field, Rachel Garcia, 13 Ks and six innings in that game one victory. Well, she was phenomenal. And really, I didn't expect to see anything less than Rachel just starting off postseason that way. She took her first loss of the season last week and against Arizona. She throws in the high 60s. She was hitting 70 yesterday. She has every pitch in her arsenal. And what I loved is she'll find different ways to beat you the second time, third time around you come through the lineup. Well, let's look at the Capital One lineup that she'll be facing from the Missouri Tigers. Brooke Wilmus is the table setter and has some pop, but Reagan Nash was three for three in that victory against Cal State Fullerton, and they've got a lot of power in the middle of the order. They do, and Reagan Nash, you just mentioned, she can slap, she can hit for line drives, but then it's the power of Roland and Moore and Wirt that come behind her that really can do the damage. Mizzou with 61 home runs this season, and Coach Larissa Anderson has done a sensational job in her first year after four years at Hofstra, 33 wins. They were picked preseason last in the SEC. They finished tied for fourth. She's already been to the NCAAs three times now, two times with Hofstra. Well, it's very exciting what she's already done here at Missouri just in her first year at the helm. So Rachel Garcia, we weren't sure if she was going to get the start. Could have been Megan Faramo, and Garcia gets the call here. And the first offering to Wilmus is fouled back, strike one. Well, and I won't be surprised if we see Megan Faramo or even Holly Azevedo enter this game as well. I think that they have talked a lot, Coach Inouye Perez, uh, about needing their entire staff. Garcia is so dominant yesterday against Weber State, those 13 Ks, but at one stretch, she struck out eight in a row from the second through the fourth innings. She, she has so much control, so much command. She knows exactly where she wants to put the pitch. You are not going to see her miss with balls over the plate. Rachel Garcia does not do that, and that's why she's so effective. 21 and 1, and a good start as she strikes out Wilmus with a high fastball. One down. 
And she throws that backdoor curve that looks like it's going to be outside and then comes across the plate. And then once she gets ahead of you, she comes back with that rise ball that just looks like it's going to stay and is jumping through the zone. She gets a lot of swing and misses on that pitch right there. 221 strikeouts now for Garcia on the season. Here's Reagan Nash. Strike one. She's dangerous if she can get on. Track type speed, a slapper, and very effective against Cal State Fullerton. Three for three. She had a, an RBI double and a couple infield singles. She was the one getting things going for them yesterday. Got an RBI, and then that led to the opportunity for more to come up with runners on base and then put them ahead to kind of take away that, that lead. They, they kind of took off after that, and they, they sealed the deal. In at the corners. Here's the 2-1 pitch. And foul back. We saw yesterday the slappers against Rachel Garcia not really having any success as they move to the box. And, and right there you saw Nash kind of slowly moving her feet, just trying to make sure she makes con contact and doesn't swing and miss. Strike three called. She sets down Wilmes and Nash via the strikeout to open things up. Last strikeout was a rise. This one's going to be her backdoor curveball that looks like it's off the plate. It starts there, but by the time it breaks, it breaks just over that outside corner to a lefty. Now Jasmine Rollin, the shortstop, who has impressive numbers, average-wise and power numbers. And across the board, what a sensational freshman year for the kid from Salt Lake. I mean, could you ask for more? I mean, you got on base percentage and slugging percentage tops in those categories. There's the other numbers. Well, I just love that when you can do it in each of those categories. You hit for average and for power. That says a lot about your consistency. Oh. I mean, it's surprising to see Garcia fall behind anyone. It's 3-0 now. It's still using that backdoor curve, trying to take away just that outside corner that... Her and Paige Halstead call their own game. Three and one. Matt Johnson, the home plate umpire here. There's a look at the rest of the group. First, second, and third base umps. And there's ball four. Good at bat for Rollin. Tigers have a base runner. Well, and right now, Halstead is going to go out and talk to Rachel Garcia, and that particular at bat, they really tried to stick with that exact same pitch. You saw the one strike Garcia threw, it came a little bit more over the white of the plate. But other than that, she's trying to stay on that corner and she's just gonna have to see what she can get away with, what Johnson is gonna call behind home plate and what adjustment she needs to make. Six innings of work against Weber State. No one reached for the Wildcats and the Tigers in the first inning here against Garcia. Reaching the first base runner she's allowed in this regional. Now she faces Hattie Moore, who's swinging the bat as well as anybody in the country right now. We talked about it in the open. She has that confidence, not just defensively and as a leader, but at the plate as well. Big cut. And she's a fun story because she really became the most improved player for Missouri after not a great freshman year offensively. Made some adjustments, worked with the new coach, hitting coach Chris Malvo, and said besides tweaking some mechanics, it was all about confidence and that belief, and she's really been living off of that this year. It's foul back. There was an illegal pitch there that ran the count to two and oh, now it's two and one. Here's a look at the grand slam in that Victory day one. And you see the lift that she is able to get off of that low pitch. She stayed through the zone so well. And I know after that first at bat, two run home run, and comes back with bases loaded, she was pumped. And that broke a 3 3 tie and put Mizzou in front to stay 7 3 against 
the Titans. Two and two, the count here. She hit just 174 as a freshman. We saw the numbers this season. Big jump offensively. Swing in the bat. Swing and a miss. Ball dropped by the catcher, Halstead, and that's a strikeout for Garcia to end the inning. A walk, a runner stranded. And we're through half a frame here in Westwood. UCLA will get their first chance with the bats when we come back. Both these teams trying to move their record to 2-0 here at the Los Angeles Regional. Mizzou comes up empty against Rachel Garcia in the top half of the frame. Now the number two overall UCLA Bruins will showcase their offense against Maddie Norman. She gets the start for the second straight day after going six innings. Not her best game, but an effective game in the victory over Cal State Fullerton. Well, she did a nice job of keeping the hits scattered. When she got into trouble, those runs and those hits came off the ball that was elevated. She does throw in the mid-60s. The drop ball, she when she throws it well, it's very effective. It, it really falls off the table. She gets a lot of ground balls when she's doing that. But yesterday, we saw some, some pitches that got in the upper part of the zone, and Fullerton hitters took advantage of that so the key here with UCLA is to keep that ball down let's take a look at the Capital One lineup for UCLA Nichols again in the leadoff spot she does everything well but Rachel Garcia very dangerous in that cleanup spot Taylor Pack actually leads in slugging and on base percentage batting fifth they have a lot of pop throughout this lineup but that middle heart of the lineup they're consistent and they hit that ball hard Nichols leads him in home runs with 14. And she had a good day one against Weber State. A couple doubles, drove in a run. Look at that. Look at those numbers on the 20 game hitting streak. <laughs> Off the charts at 500. She really zones in and Picks out good pitches to hit, has quality at bats. Even her outs, she's hitting the ball hard. Yesterday she got out a couple times with some really hard hit ground balls. So she sees the ball well, picks out a good pitch, and makes some really strong contact. 2-0 fastball catches the outside edge, 2-1. and one. You've talked about how coach loves that Nichols plays with no fear. She really is a coach's dream. And just a junior. Hammers it to dead center field and gone. Bruins on the board. I love having a hitter like Bubba Nichols in the leadoff spot. This ball is thrown right over the heart of the plate, and Bubba Nichols makes Maddie Norman pay for it. She just crushes that ball. That's what she was waiting for. She has a good eye. She's going to wait for you to make a mistake, and that was a pretty big mistake by Norman. But the power, that's the 15th home run of the season, and I love that they put her with the average that she has to get them on the board right off the bat. And that is one area she has improved in is the long ball. Last year, 413 average, 14 doubles, but the home run has become a bigger story for Bubba this year, and great start for UCLA. Here's Brianna Perez. Well, she's not your typical leadoff in that situation. We're used to seeing someone like a Brianna Perez who also, you know, gets on base a lot, a lot of different ways, also has pop in her bat, five home runs this year, but I love that they can mix things around and, and it works for them. Good swing from Perez, fouls it straight back to the screen. We've talked about the relationship with her older sister, Kylie, who's a volunteer assistant. She calls her the translator in that UCLA dugout, and they stay connected even though they're not out on the field together. She said it's just been nice having her to talk to, to be able to kind of be the mediator, the liaison between the coaching staff, the players. And it's real, really helped them all to be on the same page. Going to lay the bunt down. 
Third baseman Wirt charging the throw, and it's through the glove of Romain. Safe at first base is Perez. That speed can cause so many issues for defenders. That ball was fielded cleanly by Wirt. She got a pretty good jump on the ball, but that speed and the timing. And they're going to call that an error on Wirt. Throw off the mark there. So a long ball, then the short game for UCLA. And here's Aaliyah Jordan. Drilled to left center field. It carries toward the track. It carries out of here. Three nothing UCLA. They have good reason to celebrate right now. The Bruins are coming out swinging. Aaliyah Jordan with so much power. She gets all of this ball. It is no doubt off the barrel. Lots of celebration. And we talked yesterday about all the, the ways. They start off first inning with some small ball, little base hits, scoring a couple runs. But this is a completely different start today. And maybe this is a carryover from that inning where they broke it open against Weber State, a four-run inning where they sent nine to the plate to kind of put it on ice. It is carried over. Now Rachel Garcia. Home runs number 61 and 62 as a team for the Bruins after Nichols and Jordan take it out of here in the first inning. It's not like they got off to a bad start yesterday in the first inning against Weber State. They did score two runs, but it, there seems to be a different focus here today. Well, and a different swing, and I do think it kind of is just them working from the end of that game and kind of carrying that over into this game. And, you know, we did see it. It took them a little bit. That happens sometimes in postseason. That first game, maybe, you know, they're, they're playing loosely, but maybe there are some jitters. And, you know, Coach Inouye was saying that she was – you know, she said, when we play our best, we find these little hits, and then the extra hits start coming. Well, again, if they're taking over from what happened yesterday and just adding to that, it looks like that's what's happening here. Garcia now already has a three-run cushion to work with in the circle. She'll try to help out her cause here. Count one and two. Got a piece of that one to stay alive. They're kind of going to call that error when Perez was batting an error on the first baseman instead of the third baseman. It's going to be on Romaine. who tried to field that throw from third to first. And that gave Jordan a chance to drive in a couple with a home run. Garcia waits on it, lifts it in the air to center. Wilmus is there. And that's out number one. We see UCLA lifting that ball a little bit. And these teams, they've done their homework. They know what they're going to expect to see with Maddie Norman, that drop ball that she will throw. And yesterday, early in the game for her as well, against Cal State Fullerton, she did lift that ball a little bit. And then she kind of settled down. And so we'll see if she can kind of make a response now after these first few hitters. Fastball to Taylor Pack in there for strike one. Senior from Sutter, California. First team all pack 12. And she has shown the power numbers late season since early March when she's hit most of her home runs this year. She has all Pac-12 Conference first team. Her average, it was her power numbers, the clutch hitting RBIs, 
but also that batting average that really, I think, separated her. Nine of her 10 home runs since March 8th. And she's a very patient hitter, 22 walks on the season, a couple walks last night. And that's when you're at your best is when you're seeing the ball well, not swinging at pitches out of the zone and really forcing pitchers to come into you. Stays away from that one, thought about it. That off speed is going to be very important for Maddie Norman to be able to throw it consistently down in the zone, keeping it low, but also for a strike. Hit down the right field line and tailing foul. Safe to say the pack likes the postseason. Last year, Women's College World Series All-Tournament team hit a couple home runs against Florida and Florida State. Did you find that extra gear when you played in the postseason? I was just going to say, at this point of the season, it really is you've done all the work in fall ball. You've had all the games throughout season. And so now it's just about going out and playing, making sure you're getting the zone, seeing pitches well, and not pressing. It, it comes down to that, keeping it simple and just really building off of all that you've done prior to this point. Full count. And you'll just find there are certain players that tend to come through in bigger situations. Postseason play as well, you'll find certain hitters that will tend to press a little bit more and can, you know, continue to, to struggle at that time of year, but others that really rise the occasion, and Pack has shown that she's risen. 3-2 is low, and a walk given up by Norman. Her first. And that's going to bring Larissa Anderson out for a visit. Well, they know that right now it's the first inning. This is the very beginning of the game. So much game left, but they've got to put a handle on this right now. they got to stop the bleeding. They have already given up three runs, and they got to find a way to get out of this inning and get their hitters back in. And so she's talking with Maddie Norman, Hattie Moore, the catcher, who does talk a lot to her pitcher and probably just reminding her to to stay loose, find that release point because it's that consistency and spinning that ball and, and not trying to be too perfect that really makes a difference. Norman, fifth year senior from Tipton, Missouri. She had a no hitter against Oregon in April. And we talked about how important she is to the success of this program in this regional. Trying to get out of this inning without any Further damage. Here's Colleen Sullivan, who had a big single against Weber State in that big six run in, or sixth inning where they put four runs on the board. She'll get an opportunity as a starter here against Mizzou. And she did come in that pinch hit situation and and got things going for them, had a quality at bat, hit the ball hard, and they she's someone they've looked to this season to give them these types of at bats, a split time at behind the plate, as well as coming in and pinch hitting situations. And so today she finds herself in that lineup. You can hit, they're gonna find a place for you. One and two, she drove in a couple runs in their victory against Missouri in regular season play back early season in Cathedral City. That was an 11-3 Bruins win. Ground ball back through the middle. Backhanded by the second baseman. The throw to first and the double play. Bailey to Romaine. Romaine applying the tag and they turn two to get out of the inning. 3-0 Bruins. It'll be Wirt, Decker, and Romaine coming up. Middle part of the Tigers. Order. Bubba Nichols gets it started for UCLA. And Jordan as well. 3-0 UCLA. 3-0 Bruins. Rachel Garcia after victory number 22. She struck out the side. Did walk one in that first inning. 
And she gets a little offensive help from Bubba Nichols and Aaliyah Jordan, a couple home runs to give UCLA the advantage here. And this is similar from the victory against Weber State. They got two in the first and then rode the arm of Garcia before they broke the game open. But the long ball finally stepping up here for UCLA. Well, I think if they continue to swing it like that and these hitters continue to make that impact and score some maybe a couple more runs, I wouldn't be surprised to see the staff come into effect. This pitching staff, they have three very solid pitchers in Framo and Azevedo as well as Garcia. And, and so I think that that's, that's probably what they're looking toward, get a good good enough lead and, and bring in their other pitchers. Power versus power here. Garcia against Kim Wirt, their biggest power source. 18 home runs. She's driven in 47. Transfer from Hofstra. She's a sophomore from Melfa, Georgia. She was used mostly as a pinch hitter in her first year playing college softball. Rachel Garcia pulling out that change up that yesterday she didn't throw until later in the game. Works ahead on the count one and two. And even her misses are, are just out of the zone. Rachel Garcia throws a lot of strikes. She gets a lot of swing and misses. And then she, when she gets ahead, a lot of, a lot of chasing. How tough of a pitch is that to lay off of that rise ball? You see it? It looks like it's in the zone, and then it's not. Well, her ball jumps as well as anybody else's in the country, and so as hitters, you really got to see that ball down. And she blows that one past Wirt and strikes out Kim Wirt. Out number one here in the second. And as a hitter to see the off-speed pitch, the rise ball that just jumps up out of the zone, she comes back to this curveball. She throws that on both sides of the plate and just nonchalantly walks away after, after getting the strikeout. Look at that, seventh all-time in school history now in career strikeouts after that one as Kira Decker stands in. Will you get the sense that we may see Faremo and Azevedo already four strikeouts for Garcia after 13 yesterday? No one's had an answer thus far in this regional. Blows that one past Decker. I'm going to say as a left-handed hitter, to me, the backdoor curve that not a lot of pitchers can throw with a great break, but more than that, located every single time like Garcia's, is probably the hardest pitch to hit. Oh. I, I that in a lefty pitcher who has a ton of break, the curveball that goes away from you, but there's also not a lot of pitchers, I think, that can master that pitch. But Rachel Garcia, one of the best at locating that backdoor curve to lefties. <laughs> And she strikes out Decker. Six batters faced, five strikeouts for Rachel Garcia. And that's just a tough pitch to catch up with because of the break that it has. And what I also like is this pitch is coming up a little bit. She throws that ball to where it goes down and up at different times. And so she's locating different spots of the zone. And you're trying as a hitter just to be able to, to connect with the ball. Now Colby Romaine's claim to fame is knowing the zone. Here she's going to pop that one up. Garcia with a late throw, and she's on. Interesting, she, it could have rolled over the chalk foul, but she felt she could get the out, and Mizzou has their second base runner. Well, I think at first the way she approached it was to let it go, but then I think when she saw it bounce up, that it was bouncing pretty straight, and she thought, well, I, I need to try to get the out. But at that point, I, I think that it would have been better to, to play your odds because you're not going to have Romaine go anywhere from there. So an infield single with two outs by Romaine, and here's Kendall Bailey. Check swing foul. Well, sometimes in this game, as you know, it's better to be lucky than good. You find a way on, any way 
possible, and Mizzou has done that a couple times in each of the first two innings. Well, that softball found its way back into our press box just to <laughs> our right. I'm glad I had a softball legend to my right. <laughs> I was about to bail there, Leah. <laughs> I'll protect you all day. <laughs> I got it. It's Didn't bring my glove. <laughs> it's been a while. I, I, I want to play. Postseason brings back so many memories. But one of the things that I'm noticing with these Missouri hitters, and, and you credit Rachel Garcia for this, but there's a lot of hesitant swings. You're seeing that they're not 100% sure when, when they're taking a hack. Bailey pops it up. It's in foul ground. Halstead can't locate it, and it drops safely into foul ground, and Bailey's at-bat continues. Well, these are the little areas that UCLA is going to have to work on in this situation. You don't want to give any free passes, and that ball was hit high and foul, and really not any communication. Bree Tualafua at third base was up there. Rachel Garcia was there, but they just kind of, I think, expected Halstead to get it. Bailey hitting just 188 this year, trying to keep this inning going. Got a piece of that one. And that was a nice cut right there. A little more aggressive, picking that curveball out. The key is to try to stay off that, that ball that's going up and instead the one that's spinning sideways. The one-two, got a piece of it. Slow roller to second. Washington flips to first in time to retire Bailey and in the inning. A single, a runner stranded. Seven, eight, and nine hitters coming up for UCLA, leading three-nothing as we head to the bottom of the second. And we welcome you to Clearwater. The amount of great matchups and great teams here. Good piece of hitting here. It is gone! Spectacular matchups all weekend here. To the track! Are you serious? A magical couple of days. What an incredible event. 2019 was fun. How about 2020? These are some of the teams participating. Look at Missouri. Coach Anderson will have them there in the sunshine in February. And a good field already. When she talked about their tough preseason conference games this season they're doing it again by going to Clearwater you are going to be facing the best teams in the country right off the bat SEC and Big 12 representation and some other schools added as well and a lot of fun to get softball started early season postseason here UCLA trying to win their 48th of the year leading Missouri 3-0 Paige Halstead leading things off against Maddie Norman as we open up the home half of the second inning. Bruins, an NCAA tournament record, 35th appearance. They've won 210 games, lost just 58 in the tournament. And now 64 and six at Easton Stadium, hosting their 24th regional. Unbelievable numbers. Halstead pulls it, a high hop, and it's gloved by Romaine, unassisted one down. When UCLA, they were ranked first a good part of the season. It was a couple losses late in conference play, to or one to Oregon and then Stanford near the end, and then at the very end, it was... Arizona and so for them that that gave them the number two spot Oklahoma went up but this is something they they worked this hard this year so that they could host and be one of the top seeds to be able to get that home field advantage in postseason Kinsley Washington takes strike one and winning at least to share the Pac-12 title that means a lot around here obviously it's, uh, it's, it's been a while. For it this has program. been a while, and that's something that was for a long time. They were the ones who were expected and the reigning champs, and so this year they were able to get back to the top and shared that title with Washington. Only two now for Kinsley Washington. 
The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, May 30th, 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. For more info on the 2019 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Will the Bruins get back there for the fifth consecutive season? It's one of the questions. It's being asked around this part of the country, and I'm sure nationally, uh, you know, you wonder about Florida State, you wonder about Oklahoma. When Florida State, I mean, when they played in that Clearwater tournament, I watched them, and I just thought they are starting off right where they left off last year winning the national title. But then you also saw UCLA, Oklahoma, and the season they were having. You're thinking this is going to be a very exciting postseason. Washington swings and misses, and that is Norman's first strikeout. Two outs in the inning. And I wanted to see after going in that, after that first inning and giving up those couple home runs, how she would respond. And Norman comes back nicely. This pitch is still way out of the zone, but really making that drop ball spin down. Yesterday we saw that's when she had that success is when she located it. And then when she got ahead, really making it drop off the table. Now Kelly Gooden, first team all Pac-12 freshman. And that one will roll and roll and stay fair. She is on. Missouri gave it every chance to roll over the chalk. It did not want to do that. And UCLA has a two-out base runner. And Kelly Gooden, a big reason for the success that UCLA has had this season. Only a freshman has made an impact in a big way. So much speed, but her touch is what I love. She gives them so many opportunities and perfection right there, taking that ball down the first baseline. <sighs> they were looking for that spin to the right. It just was not going to happen. Top of the order now, Bubba Nichols rips it and foul down the left field line. Bubba Nichols seeing that ball so well, comes up swinging this first pitch, an off-speed pitch. Does a nice job of staying through that ball. She continues her hit streak and I don't know, to me, definitely the one that, that is the, pit, the hitter to look at right now for the Bruins. Hitting streak now at 21 games. And she's a, a player that sometimes gets overlooked. You know, she doesn't have the big name, and, and even though she has the numbers and everybody kind of knows who she is, it's more the Rachel Garcia that gets looked at, or, or even just Gooden has had a lot of attention because of her speed and short game. Bubba Nichols cannot be overlooked. Runner going, throw down to second. It's on the money, good throw, and they get Gooden trying to steal second. Moore with a perfect throw to get him out of the inning. So a caught stealing for UCLA, still a 3-0 game. We head to the third in Westwood. I don't think it's fair. I mean, I wasn't there in 2016. Um, half my team wasn't there. It was one kid. It was one student athlete that was impacted by this, this tutor. Um, that She made poor decisions, and she can go on, and, and she's since transferred from Mizzou, and she's playing at another institution, and she's continuing her career, and um, nothing happens to her, and nothing happens to the other 12 athletes. So now it's three programs that are impacted by some poor decisions. Um, and the three coaches that are part of those programs with football and baseball and softball weren't here in 2016. So now we're having to, to kind of clean up um, what had happened back then. NCAA sanctions levied on MU, but they are on hold through an appeal process, and they're using this as a great opportunity to showcase this program, this club in postseason play. Well, and I love how Coach Anderson really is fighting for her players. I think that's the thing that you see is, and, and she talked about how this adversity and this whole situation is not only um, helping them to keep perspective, keep the game simple, but also preparing them for life. Callie Martin hits a chopper to Tau Talafua across in time. Out number one to open up the third inning for Mizzou. And again, this is a Missouri program that was picked last in the SEC preseason poll. And you can't say enough about the job she's done. 12-12 12 and 12 in the SEC. 13 SEC teams going to postseason this year. And there's a look at the record. And look at the conference wins 
and against really good competition. They and they fared well against the top 25 this year with seven victories. Well, they did, and and had a tough schedule all season long. And she said at first, getting them to believe they could do it that that was the key. And then they would get a win, and they think, okay. And then they'd all of a sudden sweep, and they're thinking, okay, we really can play this. Tao Talafula with another great play at third, and that was. Highlight variety there, robbing Wilmus of a base hit. Two down. One of those quick reactions at third base, that 5-6 hole. Nice reach by Talalaf Talafua. And you see that just pumps up the team when you make those types of plays. They call it hot corner for a reason. And she was playing up as well as Reagan Nash fouls off the first offering. Well, the way the ball just jumps off the bat these days, you see their reactions have to be so quick, especially as a third baseman. But I love just having that confidence. I, I think of Coach Lisa Fernandez probably working with her on that. And having that confidence to play up, because when you do, you start taking away some options for the hitters, especially the lefty hitters. You see her up the line at third, almost equal with that pitching rubber. Here's the 0-2, pulled, and this is towards the first baseman, and Pack makes the play. Three ground ball outs and a quick inning for Rachel Garcia. Top of the order, Nichols will come up, and then Perez and Jordan, the Bruins, leading by three. It'll be the top of their lineup showcase next. Yeah, I've always wanted to have the ball. Um, <laughs> I was always kind of in t-ball, you know, how like the pitcher was always the one that would get the ball the most. I was always wanting to be the pitcher and I always wanted to be first base because they would catch the ball. Um, but then growing up, I just like kind of went all over the field and I loved it because it was always a change and I never liked being in one spot. <laughs> when you're in center field, like how do you get yourself to Bubba Nichols, and you know, I hope those coaches at an early age learn to give her a bat and a ball because she does everything well. Well, yeah, I love that you can put her anywhere on defense because you want her in the lineup. She is the hitter you want to have on your team, and just her passion for the game. She's so athletic, very versatile, and I love how she plays this game. Hit a rocket to center field over the fence to open this one up for the Bruin offense, her 15th home run of the year. Couple doubles in day one against Weber State. And the Bruins have the lead with Rachel Garcia pitching and that is a deadly combination. Trying to get more against Maddie Norman as we open up the home half of the third inning. Off speed there for ball one from Norman. Nichols, three-time all-conference pick. First team, all Pac-12 this year. Second team the year before. And her freshman year as well. Hits that a rope to right, and it's caught at the track. Martin gloving it. That one looked like it might get out of here. She hit that ball hard. We saw her yesterday take some balls down the left side of the field. A home run over center, and, and that ball hard to right. She's seeing the ball well and hitting it hard right now. First of three today. This is the winner's bracket game. The elimination game coming up 8.30 Eastern time. Following this one, Weber State and Cal State Fullerton. Kelly Ford's Titans, four-time defending Big West champs, trying to keep their season going. Here's Brianna Perez up the middle. Second baseman Bailey in time. Two good defensive plays from the Tigers. Two down. And I like the shifting that I see happening defensively with Missouri. There's been a couple plays up the middle that we've seen by Kendall Bailey, and it's really about seeing where people tend to hit the ball and being in those right positions to give yourself the best chance to be able to make the play. Now Aaliyah Jordan fresh off that two-run home run, her first time up. You know, Jordan actually had surgery on her right throwing arm in the fall. You see the, the, the right elbow brace there. Sure hasn't affected her offensive numbers. 
She came out swinging last year as well and had an immediate, immediate impact on this Bruin ball club. And she's kept that going. And even with that injury in that situation and coming back into this lineup and has played some outfit for them. Sometimes they choose to have her in the DP role, giving them some different options. But that's one of the things we've talked about and they were telling us yesterday is just the depth and options they have uh, on defense to move people around. We saw Zoe Shaw and Jackie Prober out there in right field yesterday. UCLA getting the runs in the first on a solo home run from Bubba Nichols, a two-run shot from Jordan. Three Bruins now with double-digit home runs this year. Nichols, Jordan, and Pack. Chopper to first, and Romaine unassisted to the bag, and a quick one, two, three frame. Eight pitch inning for Norman, holding UCLA in check. Three innings in the books. We'll talk to Kelly Noy Perez when we come back with the Bruins up here in Westwood. Bruins. 3-0 lead for the Bruins here in Westwood on three hits as they get a couple home runs in the first inning. We're joined now by Kirk Walker, the defensive coach, third base coach for UCLA. Coach, talk about Garcia, the decision to go with her. Do, we, do you expect to see Ferremo and uh, someone else here in, in the second game? Well, you know, I think they're all ready to go, and, and we've got three great pitchers. So it's a matter of about, you know, obviously kind of figuring out matchups and, uh, you know, and seeing where the game is at any given time. But uh, I expect that we're going to see uh, somebody else uh, at some point today. Well, and yesterday we saw with hitting some small ball, it took you guys till the sixth inning to really break things open. What was the difference in today's big start with those couple home runs in the first inning? Well, I think they were really locked in. Obviously, we, we faced this pitcher before, and we've seen some video, and I think they were really pretty locked in. And obviously, Bubba, you could tell that first at bat was really seeing the ball well, um, and still has seen the ball well. So I think, uh, you know, I just came out, we just jumped on some really um, good pitches to hit early in the count. Coach, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Mizzou with Jasmine Rollin leading things off against Garcia. Five strikeouts in the first two innings. She had three ground ball outs in the last frame. Rollin walking her first time up. Pulls it, Washington in time. And another ground ball out, and that is five consecutive set down via the ground ball. And I think the biggest difference with UCLA this year, they did have a staff, lost a couple senior pitchers last season, but they brought in Megan Faremo, and between her and Holly Azevedo, who's now a sophomore, who had a lot of innings last year and did very well, I feel like they're more of a, a deeper staff, the three of them together. And you almost wonder if any of this plays into the fact that Faremo did take the loss against Stanford late in the season. And last inning, there were two losses against Arizona. And so if they're going to Rachel, just maybe to get that lead and get that start, and then they know they can count on the other two. There's a change of pace pitch from Garcia. Drops in there, a beauty 0-2. When well, she's throwing in the high 60s and then throws that one 52 miles per hour, that is very hard as a hitter. And now, not only have you seen it, you have to keep in the back of your mind that she might come back again with that same pitch. 0-2 to Hattie Moore. Just off the plate with that one. Moore with a two home run, six RBI performance yesterday in the win against Cal State Fullerton. Struck out her first time in this one. Big cut, fouls it back. We're in Westwood at Easton Stadium alongside the three-time NCAA champ, Leah Amico. I'm Trey Bender. Winner will advance to 2-0 and move to the regional final Sunday.
the elimination game to follow. Weber State taking on Cal State Fullerton. There's a swing and a miss. And that is strikeout number six for Garcia. And so many different ways that Garcia can beat you. This one different than we've seen with the backdoor curve, the rise ball, and that one more of an off-speed pitch than a changeup. Don't miss a minute of the action from the NCAA Softball Regionals. We'll take you to the best live action on the Bases Loaded channel on the ESPN app. You can see every game and every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. Kim Wirt fanned her first time up. Oh. 31 batters face for Garcia now, 19 strikeouts in two days. Popped up. Foul ground, Halstead with a mask off, and she makes the play. Another one, two, three frame for Rachel Garcia. Still 3-0 Bruins. Garcia will lead off in the cleanup spot next for UCLA. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Los Angeles Regional here. This is game one of three. Winner's bracket game. Somebody's going to move to 2-0. and Our elimination game to follow. It's Weber State, the Big Sky champs, against Cal State Fullerton, the Big West champs, with the season on the line. And then we'll have another elimination game at 11 Eastern time approximately. The winner will head to the Supers, and that will be decided on Sunday. Rachel Garcia... Leading off the inning here against Maddie Norman with UCLA in front. Well, after that Jordan home run that put him up 3-0, Bruin offense has kind of been a neutral since that point. One for eight with a walk. And the one hit was Kelly Gooden's bunt that went down the first baseline, so not really too much damage with the power of their bats. Garcia, oh, what a play by Norman. Snares that one in the circle, one down. And I just think this has to do with Norman kind of settling in and being able to locate her pitches and stay down in the zone, that drop ball moving through, and that ball was hit hard, but good reaction by Norman to field her position. You know, she did that yesterday. She gave up two in the second and one in the first to Cal State, or one in the third to Cal State Fullerton, and then kind of settled into a groove there and allowed her team to get back into it with their offense. Trying to work the same blueprint here as Taylor Pack stands in. Well, I think that's why we saw Coach Larissa Anderson go out to the field and have that talk with her after she had walked Taylor Pack and possibly putting them you know, in another dangerous situation. And so that leadership, being able to kind of slow things down, talk to her pitcher, really turn things around for them. Oh. Maddie Norman talking about how she's just a competitor. It's her senior year. She said, I've always been competitive. I want the ball. But even with that, and, and she had the experience from yesterday, but still, knowing it's the number two team in, in the country that you're facing, sometimes your nerves can get the best of you. 2-0 is fouled off. She mentioned how her rise ball has improved this year. And, and you like to see that. Good pitchers continue to get better by adding more pitches to the repertoire. And when you're known as a drop ball pitcher, you want to give a hitter a different look. If they're only having to look down, it's so much easier as a hitter to expect something and turn on it than it is if you all of a sudden have to change planes and think she may come back at me with the rise ball. Check swing, and Pack went two and two. Interesting stance for Pack, has that open stance with the left leg out. And the mix of speeds has been effective, as well as her locating better these last couple innings, spinning the ball with a little more breakdown on that drop ball. Bouncer to Rollin, and that ate her up. She had a tough time coming up with that one. 
Kind of caught in between hops. And Pack is aboard with one down. And Rollin, as soon as that ball was hit, tried to come forward on it and almost filled it off of that long hop, but it kind of caught her in between. So she moves forward on this, and the ball just gets up on her. She's not able to hold on to that. A couple errors for the Mizzou defense, and here's Colleen Sullivan. Sullivan opinionated, wants to be a lawyer, and she uh, is opinionated despite being a freshman. A lot of confidence, student of the game. If you're going to miss on that drop ball, that's where you want to miss is just low. It's a really nice location. Early in the game, she was missing up a little bit, and that's the ball that's going to get you in trouble. Low with that one. Norman got some help last time Sullivan was up there. They turned a 4-6 double play. Bailey to Rollin on to first base to get out of the inning. And just the reaction of the swings of the UCLA hitters on that drop ball shows that it's, it's really spinning tight right now in that lower half of the zone. Two, two. Norman had 10 strikeouts against South Carolina this year. That was a highlight for her. Working towards a master's degree in positive coaching. Coach on the field. Payoff pitch. Little looper. Rollin can't get there. It'll find its way into left field and a single for Sullivan. Her second hit in this regional. The well, last time her last step out, a ground ball into a double play. She hit the ball hard up the middle, but Bailey was shaded towards the middle and made that double play. And this time the ball has eyes on it and just finds that green out there. So as a hitter, you just you take those. <laughs> hit them where they ain't. And now Bruins will go to a pinch runner. Danae Bloget will come in and run for Sullivan. Now they'll also make a move at the plate with Brianna Tautalafua hitting in Halstead spot. And this is just one of the ways UCLA can hurt you. A lot of moving pieces. They have a lot of depth, a lot of options. They utilize all of their roster in different situations, very situational hitting that they, as well as base runners that they use. Oh. Coach Inouye Perez giving Kirk Walker the freedom to be able to put that lineup and move the defense around and, and they work together, but she gives him a lot of freedom. He's very smart about Substitutions. You heard from Kirk earlier about Garcia, and whether they would go to Faramo or Azevedo. We'll see. They've got a chance to break this one open here with a couple runners out there. Bounced up there. Moore keeps it in front, but the runners advance to second and third. 
So Pack to third, Loger to second, and now a single could score a couple. Wild pitch. We have speed with Bloget on second, so that ball finds that green. I would expect her to be running. Takes away that force play. Double play possibility as well. They're in on the infield. And ball four, bases loaded. And a nice piece of hitting by Tao Talafua on that outside drop ball that is just off the plate. Bruins will go to another pinch runner here as Coach Anderson talks with Norman. Stevie Wiz will be at first base. Coach Anderson pulling her team together. Just that leadership of wanting to remind them right now, they're down three to nothing. They do not want any more runs to come across. So the key, especially with a drop ball pitcher, is to get that ground ball and to make that play at home. See if you can turn a double play. We saw them do that in the first inning to get out of any more trouble. With Washington up, we saw her put one off the wall yesterday for a triple, so <laughs> we'll see who can win this battle right now. Washington struck out first time up, but she was three for three in that game. A couple singles as well against Weber State. Bruins picked up their three runs in the first, but a golden opportunity to break it open here. Fastball's in there. Washington, a triple threat. Hit her first, but she can slap it, can bunt it. Pulls it towards second. Through Bailey's glove and into right field. Couple runs will score. And the Bruins have a five-run cushion now in the fourth inning. And you put the bat on the ball, make defense work, and that ball finds the grass. Two runs coming across, the pinch runner helping them with some speed. I'm a little surprised Bailey didn't approach that ball a little bit better and get behind that. I think she could have made that play on the short hop and potentially gotten the out at home. Pack and Bloger score and first and second situation and now Kelly Gooden at the plate. Two big runs from the Bruins here. And again they do it with pinch runners and pinch hitters. They're, they're able to beat you in so many different ways. We saw four pinch runners yesterday, so they have a lot of speed in the dugout. Work charging at third base, knowing the abilities of Kelly Gooden and the way she can lay one down. Infield single last time up. It stayed fair just inside the first baseline. She'll lay the punt down here. In front of the plate, it's fair, and she's on, and the bases are loaded. Just killed that one. It died right in front of the dish. Moore couldn't do anything with it. She has so much back control. She knows exactly what she's trying to do with the ball, and she gets backspin on the ball, which is why when Moore comes up to grab this ball barehanded, she's not able to grip it because the ball is spinning, and so that backspin that she gets from how she contacts that ball makes the difference in that situation, why she's seen so much success this year. Base is full, now the top of the order, Bubba Nichols. <laughs> when you're seeing what Bruins fans have seen all year long from 
Gooden in that nine spot, being able to do things like that and then set up a very potent top of the order. They are that much more dangerous this year because of the freshmen. Good job by Moore to stay in front of that one. Well, and I think that's why they have Gooden, who has the highest average on the team in that nine spot because she isn't a power hitter. And so for her in that nine spot, in that situation, runners on first and second, most of the hitters are going to be swinging away, but she does what makes her successful. And now they have bases loaded with the power of Nichols in the one spot coming up. Two and one. How do you pitch Nichols here <laughs> if, you're, if you're Norman with the bases full? You know, I mean, right now she is in the zone. Coach Walker said that. He said she's seen the ball really well, having solid at-bats every time she steps up to the plate. And so for, I think the key is maybe an off-speed pitch down in the zone. Hit to left. Up, up, and away. Grand slam. They had no choice but to pitch to Bubba Nichols, and this ball is up in her power zone. That ball at her chest, she sends it deep. Four more runs for UCLA. I expect for us to see a different pitcher in the circle when they come out to defense. Solo home run and a grand slam for Nichols. She has 16 round trippers on the year. And here's Brianna Perez, still just one out in the inning. Because of the errors, and uh, the way it played out, especially in this inning, nine runs given up by Norman, but only two of them earned. But UCLA has busted this one wide open. A six-run fourth. Perez pulls it, and it's foul. Well, you think about the two ground balls in that inning. Taylor Pack hit it to shortstop Rollin, and she wasn't able to come up with that ball. And then that ground ball by Kinsley Washington to Kendall Bailey at second, and that ball caught past her for two runs. And those two balls, if they feel those cleanly and make those outs, they're out of that inning without any runs. Perez strikes out. That's out number two for Norman. And so as a pitcher up until that point, Norman had done her job pitching to her defense. But then all of a sudden the pressure gets on and you cannot make a mistake. And that ball up in the zone to Nichols was the pitch that you just wish you could take back. 63 home runs this season now for UCLA. Cool. Here's Aaliyah Jordan who had a two run shot in the first. The ninth hitter to come to plate in this inning and this looks very much like what they did in the victory against Weber State, sending nine to the plate. Not with the home run ball, but everybody making contact. They found more uh, power today against the Tigers. And a lot of times you'll see in those first games, it seems like teams start out a little bit slow, but then they get into that groove, and this is the number two seed and what you would expect to see out of them. 0-2 to Jordan, and Norman strikes out Jordan as Moore will throw it down to first base, and that'll end the frame. Nine come to the plate, though. Bubble Nichols, the star. Two home runs in this one, including this one. Well, grand slam for Bubba Nichols, putting her team ahead nine to nothing. She is seeing the ball well, and it's all celebration for the Bruins. 9-0 UCLA in front of Mizzou. Top of the fifth. We're joined by the Tigers coach, Larissa Anderson. Coach, uh, you've had a great first day. Uh, you've dealt with adversity before. What's your message? I know we still have this inning here, but to your club right now. We just got to keep competing. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. We gave up too many free bases with the errors in, in that situation and then the walk. And I mean, we just have to compete and, and never say die and, and show what, what this team is made of and how much heart we have. When your team one hit so far, what's your message to your hitters and what are you looking at them to, to change? We got to control the strike zone. We're chasing balls out of the zone and, and, and trying to do too much. 
much. And I mean, she's a hell of a pitcher, and she's really strong. And, and we're making her look really good by chasing balls too far out of the zone. Coach, thanks for the time. Thanks. Megan Faramo is going to get the call now as Garcia finishes her day with another stellar effort, six strikeouts. And the Bruins make some defensive changes as well. But the go to the freshman who had a sensational year, Pac-12 freshman of the year. Well, she's a power pitcher. She's going to throw that ball hard into the mid to upper 60s. But she is another pitcher like like Garcia that can beat you many different ways. She just attacks the strike zone. She will go right at the hitter. She's not afraid. I've loved the presence that she has stepped into immediately in this program this year as a freshman. And the Bruins also make a few defensive switches around her. Shaw's now in right field. Sullivan playing first base, and Pack moves from first over to third base. Let's look at Shaw, who we saw yesterday in that spot in right field. And Faramo getting an opportunity here to close the door. The eight-run rule could come into effect here, and the Bruins could win it here in this fifth inning if they can maintain a lead of eight runs. And a pretty good opportunity for her to get some action here before the Bruins will come back and, and play on Sunday. Well, you like being able to get some pitches for Megan Faramo. You know that they're going to need her in this postseason. They're going to need their entire staff. Holly Azevedo was able to come in yesterday. It was a kind of a surprise to everybody, especially after... Garcia had a, a perfect going heading into the seventh inning, but she was able to come in and make those last three outs combined with Garcia for a no-hitter. This is Gianna Torres in as a pinch hitter for the Tigers, hitting in Decker spot in the order. As they need a couple runs to keep this game going. Megan Framo, another pitcher who worked a lot this year with pitching coach Lisa Fernandez, mechanics, but also the mental game. One of 10 finalists for the National Freshman of the Year, the number one recruit in the nation, Gatorade National Softball Player of the Year. Here's Lisa Fernandez. And a walk to open up the inning. Torres is aboard. This is why I think it's good for them to be able to give Megan Framo a look and get her in, in the game in this situation. She's thrown a lot for the Bruins this season, 107 innings, but it's postseason now. She's a freshman, and so to be able to get in in a situation like this, kind of let get her that chance to settle in a little bit. Colby Romain hits that foul down the left field line and out of play. Giving a look over there was Gooden. Ramo said she's learned a lot from Rachel Garcia just to have someone like that to bounce ideas off of her. And Garcia said, I want you to challenge me for the starting spot this year. And that's gone a long way into her success this season. Well, it has because the mentality of just thinking, okay, I'm coming in and I'm going to be a backup pitcher compared to, no, work to beat me out. I don't care if I won the award last year for best player in the country. Have the mentality that you want to earn that spot, knowing, and Rachel Garcia, that's smart of her, knowing as a leader that that's what it's going to take. It's that mentality in all three of us, Holly Azevedo, Faramo, and myself, for us to, to be national champions. A little conference with Halstead, a quick chat in the circle. And that senior leader coming out and just reminding her, just stay within yourself. Don't overdo it. Don't rush anything. Still one and two to Colby Romain, who singled her first time up. And they said sometimes that pitch came in at 68 miles per hour, and sometimes when she starts getting those higher speeds, that she's, she loses a little bit of her movement. And so it's a matter of keeping the movement while using the speed. Fly ball hit to center field. Nichols, a few strides to her left, has it. One down. The 
you think of all the success Faramo has had, that's her first postseason out. So everything is new to her at, at this stage. It is. And you kind of got to go through those moments to experience them. You can think about it all day long, but it's until you're actually in the situation. She's been watching from the side the last, you know, game and a half, but now it's her turn. A pretty pitch right there, mixing speeds. I think that's smart when you have a pitcher like Garcia who throws similar speeds. These hitters might come in and think, okay, the ball's not maybe breaking as much and, and be able to see it better. Kendall Bailey takes a strike. One on one. Fierce competitor as a freshman. From Vista, California, deals a fastball in there. It's all about setting hitters up, keeping them guessing back-to-back change-ups, locating it for a strike, low in the zone, and then coming hard with that curveball. Ground ball could be two. Perez bobbles it, and everybody's safe. Maybe thinking about getting it quickly to Washington. They had a chance to end this one on the double play there, but two runners aboard now. The air on the shortstop. When you just can't get ahead of yourself, you got to make sure that you make every play, slow the game down. That was a ball right to her. And Coach Anderson's going to go to another pinch hitter here. Emma Robbie will come in and hit for Martin in the ninth spot in the order. When these are the situations, uh, this is this is the stuff that needs to, they have a nine run lead, so right now they're able to get away with this. But in the games that are close, you cannot get away with these types of mistakes. You've got to be able to field the ball cleanly. I like the fact that they're keeping the freshmen smiling right now. And you're seeing they're still, they're still loose. In this situation, I think, okay, now how are you going to respond? And all season long, Framo's done a nice job of when she gets in a jam, she, she responds nicely. That's the 10th error we've seen in this regional. That was a play Perez makes 99 times out of 100 there at short. That benefits Missouri trying to take advantage of it with Emma Robbie in there. Perez, Pac-12, all defensive team at short. Here's the 0-1. Big cut, 0-2. Robbie, a power hitter for the Tigers. Can't catch up with that one. Kind of a check swing and a strikeout. The first in the postseason for Faramo, and they're an out away. And that was all about the setup, the off speed, being able to throw it for a strike and then come back, get the rise ball out of the zone, and, and then you just chase a little bit higher. The winner of this Los Angeles Regional faces the winner of the Ann Arbor Regional. How about Michigan? against James Madison. They get a big victory. A lot of people are talking about that matchup. The Wolverines, 2-0. Brooke Wilmus now, top of the order for Mizzou. Trying to keep this inning going. And she's hit by pitch, and bases are loaded. So the Tigers putting something together here. They're down to their last out, but their runner at second represents the second run, which would keep this one going and keep them from getting run ruled here. Reagan Nash at the plate. Ramos pitch, ground ball into right field. Shaw comes up with it, gets it back into the infield. A run is across, RBI for Nash, and it's 9-1. to one. And this is why we saw Rachel Garcia start this game. Megan Framo has had 
a very successful freshman campaign. But in this situation, pressure's on. Base is loaded. They're one out away, but they come up with the hit. Reagan Nash, the senior, coming up clutch for her team, keeping them alive right now. Still an eight-run lead. And Lisa Fernandez with a few thoughts for the freshman here. Bruins are going to make a defensive switch. Looks like Jordan's going to head back out to right field and replace Shaw. And is Garcia coming back in? They're bringing Garcia back in, and the reason is there's bases loaded right now, and they are winning by eight runs. If they can shut the door and get this last out, they win by the run roll. The game is over. They also said Garcia, Coach Inouye Perez, said, I've never seen somebody come in and be so successful with bases loaded situations. So a pitching change, they'll go back to Rachel Garcia as they try to close the door here in the top of the fifth. More coming from Westwood. In Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series. The Young Guns of Oklahoma have won the national championship. Rachel Garcia back in the circle. She started. Faramo goes two-thirds. Now back to the All-American. When you look at her numbers and just the position she puts them in, such a competitor, 55 pitches, very efficient out there. Lots of swing and misses. Mizzou has done a nice job trying to put the ball in play and contact, and, and this is... And Kirk Walker wants a few words from Matt Johnson. They originally sent Shaw out to right field, brought Jordan in to replace her, and now it looks like they're going back to Shaw. So we'll, the, the three defensive switches are now two. Shaw remains in right. We have Tao Tao Fula now playing third, and Pack is at first base. Along with the pitching change, Garcia... Trying to close the door here as the Bruins are an out away from winning it. Trying to bring the eight run rule into effect. Here's Jasmine Rollin. Top hitter against top pitcher. Tigers trying to keep this game going. Strike on the corner, one and one. And if I'm a hitter, that's the pitch that I'm thinking. I have to protect that backdoor curve as a lefty hitter. Popped up. Foul ground. Halstead mask off. She's got it. She hangs on, and the Bruins win it. The eight-run rule comes into effect. 9-1, our final here in Westwood. One ball dropped earlier. Paige Halstead was not going to let that happen again. It doesn't need to be pretty. You just got to catch the ball, and she does just that. You see her kind of reading that ball, chasing it, and just comes up with it. You finish the play. That's it. They get the win. They finish by run roll. Halstead had trouble with one of those pop-ups earlier in the game she delivers big time there as the Bruins win it nine to one they go to two and oh and they will await in the regional final on Sunday Mizzou moves into the elimination game following our next game between Weber State and Cal State Fullerton this was a dominant effort from UCLA well I, I liked what I saw with their bats today they came out swinging hard swinging often and that is what you expect out of a two seed and they'll see if they can continue that tomorrow but now they're going to wait and see who they're going to face who can come out from today so our next game, Weber State and Cal State Fullerton, an elimination game here in Westwood. Rachel Garcia getting the victory, and the bats come alive for UCLA as they win their 48th of the year. Stay with us. More coming 